Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here working on the cub. Mitch is behind the, the camera. I, I have neglected to mention Mitch. Guess it takes me a while to get back into the swing of things. Anyway, welcome, welcome to the shop. We're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about what's new. On the cub project, we're going to see if we can fire it up today. And I look back to when I got the cub. 18 months ago. Now that wasn't working on it full time because I did go to hospital and life life happened. 18 months and then I added up how much things cost. This wheel I put on the tire and all that. The whole wheel $1,035. So what did the bike cost? Okay pick a number in your head right now and see how close you are. Here's all my invoices. I kept every invoice there's a bit of a stack. And then I also have pages. Look, I got four pages where I wrote down all of the invoices and the total. I would have guessed, if you'd asked me yesterday before I added it up, I would have guessed eight, nine thousand dollars, but it's cheap. Six thousand two hundred and sixty dollars. So how is your estimate? I think that's not bad. You know, people say. I'm still getting comments from this other video we did. And a lot of people have said, oh, I keep all my invoices. I never add them up. Never. They go in the shoebox. The wife never sees them. Never. I like to add up. I like to know what it costs because, yes, it costs some money, but it's a lot cheaper than a car or a boat or a plane. So it's good that we do these projects and we keep track. So I had something happen. I uh, will show you on the bike. This is, this is the insert that goes down the spark plug hole. I got to set the timing. I got to find uh, a top dead center because we need to set the ignition timing. So this is the one that goes down into the, into the cub plug hole. So I was setting up the timing and this insert this is just six millimeter thread. This was in there and it didn't stick in as much. And I didn't realize that. And why I'm telling you this is because I put this in and I was moving, moving the flywheels around the piston, the valves and all that. And this piece, it came loose. I felt a little, little movement. And this, well, this piece here, it fell into the combustion chamber. So now how do you get this out? This is a pretty good fit. There's a little bit of slop with the spark plug threads. And so then now I had a problem on my hands. I had to get this out. There is no way I was going to take off the cylinder head at this stage. So this is where the welding rod came in. And so I'll tell you briefly what I did. So this is in the, in the combustion chamber and it mostly wants to fall forward because because the cylinder is at an angle and the spot and the and the piston has a dome on it. So I got this and I can't see down in there. So I'm moving this around and I'm trying to find out where it is and bring this <clears throat> up to the plug hole. So when I bring it up to the plug hole, now I can move I, I can move my degree wheel and the valve it comes up and it, it hits against the valve, one of the valves. So now I've got this in place. So now I had to figure out what to do. So I bent this piece here. This whole process, it took about an hour and a quarter, but can you see? So I've got this held by the valve. So then I press down, I push this through the spot plug hole and it just fits. So now I'm holding it like that. And then I tried needle nose pliers and all that. That didn't work. So I found these, I think they're called surgical tweezers. And these are just small enough and they got this locking, locking device. Okay, it took me half an hour to find these. I didn't include that in the air and a quarter. So then I can put it on that. Then I can pull this out and then I get it out and then I have success. So we can move over to the bike now and I'll show you how this works and how I find top dead center. Because you might not know. Here's my special tool. So you can see how much 
of a space I have. I don't have a lot of space to pull this out, so that's why it took as long as it did. So I'm going to show you how I find top dead center. I got my degree wheel mounted out here. This is all custom stuff. So I use the same setup on Excelsiors. I've got this piece out here. This is the pointer. On the Excelsiors, I have a different pointer. This comes out from the engine case. So I use the same system, but I, I have to make attachments. And then on the Excelsior, I have this one. This is longer and this is a different thread. This is 18 millimeters. This is, this is larger. So how this works. Okay, there's top dead center, I think. So what I'm doing is I'm backing it up. I do this very slowly because you don't want to injure the piston. And I've done this. So let's just see if it's still accurate. Okay, 48 degrees here. So when I swing this round, it should be the same 48 degrees on the other side. So now I'm coming up to top dead center. And it, it's 48 degrees. So that means that when I take this out, because it's done its job now, when I go to zero, that is exactly top dead center. So this is a good system to use, but you have to be careful. You have to make sure you don't drop anything down the hole and that this has to be soft. This is made out of aluminum and you always come up really easily because you don't want to put a mark in the piston or do any damage. So that's all good. So we're going to wait for Eve to come around. He's going to work on the timing, uh, on the timing light. We're going to use some rollers off my friend Tom. We'll put the bike down on the ground. It's not nice outside. It's minus three and there's snow on the ground. So I'm just going to show you a few things on the bike. I got the chain guard mounted. That was not there before. I have a side stand. It, look at that. It has no play, but, but it moves really nicely. So. I don't know if you can say the same thing about your side stand. Zero, zero play. I also want to show you the uh, headlight, how I did the lighting, because I've got electrics ignition here, and all that does is to make the spark. There is nothing here for the light, so I'm going to run a battery, and the battery is just going to run these lights just so that I'm legal. I'll switch it off and on. It's good for one ride, then I charge the battery. And so I didn't want any lights that use a whole lot of power. So these are LED lights, and I'll show you what it looks like inside the headlight, because I don't think you've seen anything like that before. Just have to take it out. Our first thing I want to show you is, can you see that? Made in France. We got a French headlight on an English motorcycle. I bet when it was up there, you never even noticed. So these are the little, little clips. I, I wanted to use the original headlight, headlight bulb, because it, because this just fits right into that. So what I did, I went to my local auto parts store and this is a, a tail light. It's just, it's a single filament. And I got one of those holders and I soldered it in. So this is just a tiny little bulb, but it's pretty bright. I've got a battery. We can plug it in and you can see how bright it is. There you go. I think that's pretty bright for a headlight, just so that it satisfies the offices. I bought a mirror out of China and I've been showing a few friends. Look how... Look. You know, look how nice this is. It was only $10, look at that. And then I noticed, like, can you see that? It's, it's little rivets in here. It's not a screw thread. It's loose. So my $10 investment, I'm not sure about it now. Maybe I got to put in a shim or I got to glue it or something. Anyway, that's what happens when you buy from China sometimes. A lot of stuff I'm really happy with, but not so good. All right, that's it for show and tell. 
We're going to put oil and gas in. We're going to bring the rollers in. Eve showed up. We're going to fire it up, hopefully. Got a brand new spark plug. It's a B6 NGK. I tried to get an 8. They don't seem to sell 8s anymore. When I was a kid, 8 was the common plug. A 6 was really hot. If you were racing, you used a 9 or a 10. A 10 was cold, cold, so sometimes you'd start with a hotter plug, like out at the road race track, and then you would switch to a 10. So that's what I remember, but things have changed. So we'll just go with what we got. This is a this is a six and it's got an R in it. So R is resistor. I'm not sure if R makes any effect on the electrics ignition. I don't know. So we'll find out. Bit more. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to fire up. This is definitely first time. We have not fired this up before. Got oil and gas in. Eve is going to hook up the starter at the right time. I have a foot switch normally, but the foot switch is crapped out. So we're doing it manually with jumper cables. And then if it fires up, like I hope it will, Eve will come here and we'll, we'll check the ignition timing. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, 160. Okay, 160. Okay, so I set it up by eye, but that didn't work because we're way out. But at least we know now that we're okay, so so the starter will work, the timing works, it's just not set right. Okay, I guess we gotta do some work now. <laughs> I didn't know I'd be working on the bike today. See, there's a keyway and there's a slot and you just put it into that slot. And I guess I have to take it off and check it. So this is what has to be moved. So what I'm gonna do, so I know where the timing is. It's at 160 and it's supposed to be at 35. So. So maybe I got to put it in the other because there's not really a lot that can you can change here or that goes wrong. So I need to use this as the puller. Ah, oh, look at that. Well, that's interesting. So that's you said you saw the 160, right? Right there. So it's firing, that's interesting, it's firing almost 180 degrees out, 180. It's almost like this wants to be on the bottom. But that's not how it works. Okay, I need to think about this. Hi, we're back. This is day two. I did some uh, inquiries last night and this morning, and I have made some uh, discoveries. But one discovery is that there's an oil leak here. Look at, can you see this? Look at all the oil there. And it looks like what's happening is it's coming from the oil tank. I have a, my engine's not leaking. It looks like the oil, it looks like the paint split there or something. So that's kind of a shame because that's that's fresh paint on that oil tank. So 
Okay, so the stator, we had the timing out 180 degrees yesterday. So I talked to my friend Steve. Well, we did, we did messaging. He's in Australia. And you see how they've got, they've got the stator mounted inside the case. So this is the front of the stator. So it's facing that way, but I've mounted it onto the motor. So it's basically, it's turned 180, 80 degrees. So what I found out is that, is the system I bought is the STK 200. I need the 202, because it allows for this to be mounted on the case. But, so I phoned up Speed and Sport in California. They've never sold the 202. They always sell the 200 that mounts in the primary cover. But he said, why don't you just use a roll pin? So this is the piece. No, nope, that's not the piece. This is the piece. This is the piece that presses in there. And, and these two keyways line up. He says to, to make that 180 degrees and then put in a roll pin. This is a tiny little roll pin. And because this is an eighth of an inch and this is basically a sixteenth, I can't use the center in between these two. I'm going to have to offset it a little bit. But as long as this grabs a little bit, he thinks that I don't even need a roll pin, but I would just feel better. So we're going to go over to the mill. We're going to set this up. We're going to press this in first. I made some lines. And we're going to turn this 180, put it all back together, and see how it works. We'll ignore my leaking oil tank, okay? This is my first time back on the mill in about half a year. So, we'll see if I'm rusty, okay? So I've got a little end mill in here, and I just have to do a little spot face. And then I drill the hole, put in the roll pin, and then reassemble everything. Yeah, see how the roll pin goes in so nicely? Okay, so that is locked. So we're coming up to top dead center and we set it at 48 degrees last time. So we'll set it at 48. So now we go around this way, nice and easy. And we're at 48. So that is top dead center. So there we go. We've established top dead center. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so it needs to be advanced a little bit. So that's where we're starting. Okay. So it goes that way, so we're going to move it this way. Just a little bit. There we go. Hmm. Well, we'll try that. See how it works. So it looks like the modification with the roll pin worked. So that's good. Okay, let's try it. Let's go a little 
more. Okay, well, we'll advance it just a little bit more. I think the carb needs to tune up. It's not running great, is it? Okay. tuning okay well she runs she needs tuning we'll get around to that fixing the oil tank and all that thank you very much for watching we got the cup started it needs a little bit of a tune-up but that can all happen in a while so I've done four months of chemo now thanks for all your support we appreciate that very much Mitch and I like coffees if you buy us coffees thumbs up See you next time. Take care.